This graph shows the number of objects larger than 10 centimeters that we are tracking in low Earth orbit. The recent search we see right here, those are the Starlink satellites. And this could cause a problem that was predicted almost 50 years ago. So back in the 1970s, the American astrophysicist Donald J. Kessler, he predicted something that we today might seem to be quite intuitive, but maybe it wasn't back then. He said that the more objects we put in low Earth orbit, the higher the chance is that some of those objects are going to collide. And what he then predicted, this is what's called the Kessler effect, is, well, if we have a lot of objects and two of them collide, that collision is going to create a debris crowd creating even more objects, increasing the chance of further collisions. And those further collisions will then create more debris, further increasing the chance. And you have this runaway cascade effect where there would be a theoretical like limit to how much stuff we could put in low Earth orbit before we run a too high risk of these objects colliding. Because while a lot of satellites today have thrusters, well, sometimes they may, they may function and we just have like debris, dead objects just floating around up there that we have no control over. And if such two objects collided, then suddenly we could have thousands of more objects that we need to steer around. And that could essentially make low Earth orbit impossible to use for satellites. This got very real back in 2007 when the Chinese, they tested their anti-satellite system, which is essentially just firing a kinetic projectile at very high speeds towards a satellite to destroy it. And when they tested the system, they destroyed one of their own weather satellites. And of course, that created a huge amount of debris. And if you actually look at the graph, well, we can see that test right here. That massive spike was the result of the 2007 Chinese anti-missile system test. Right after the test, the US, of course, began to blame the, uh, the Chinese both for polluting space by putting all this debris up there, but also for militarizing space. So naturally, the Americans do what the Americans do, and one year later, they did the same thing, and they shut down one of their own broken down um, old spy satellites. Now, this doesn't really show up in the data as prominently because that satellite was in a much lower orbit, so it would decay a lot faster, so it didn't really pollute space in the same manner as the Chinese um, test did. Um, and the US claimed that this wasn't a militarization of space, that they did this because they were afraid of the satellite uh, burning up with a lot of fuel on board. How much of that is true and how much of it is actually just them saying, hey, if the Chinese can shoot down satellites, we need to prove that we can as well. I think there's a little bit of both in it. Um, and I think the truth is probably somewhere in between. Now, while both of these collisions were intended collisions that was done on purpose, in 2009, this actually happened for real, when a Russian communication satellite, Iridium-33, collided with an old derelict um, Russian military satellite called Cosmos-2251. This created more than 2,000 pieces of debris. And of those 2,000 pieces, 15 years later today, still have 1,500 left. So only a quarter of them has naturally deorbited. Most of the others have had their orbit decay significantly and they are expected to dissipate and burn up over the next couple of years. So we're probably not going to see them stick around for too much longer. But still, that's like 15, almost 20 years that these things has just been a cloud of debris that could potentially have caused havoc if there were other satellites in similar orbits. So getting back to Starlink, as I showed in the beginning of the video, all these satellites that are launched by Starlink they have created a massive surge in the number of objects that we are tracking in low Earth orbit. However, the Starlink satellites are actually not the worst offenders. And they have done a lot to prevent this exact Kessler effect from happening. First of all, they have ion engines on board, so they can dodge satellites. If, if an impact is predicted as we're tracking all these objects, they can raise or lower the orbit slightly to prevent them from colliding with, the, with said object. And the second thing is these satellites are designed to have a very short lifespan compared to what we usually have for stuff we put into orbit. Starlink is really only um, designing these to have an operational life of five years, which is again very short. And they're doing this for, for, I think the main reason is that they want to be sure that their satellite is always at the like, bleeding edge of technology. They don't want to end up in a situation where they have thousands of like 15, 20 year old tech flying around up there. This is supposed to deliver like fast internet 
so therefore they need to be able to have a natural upgrade path for these satellites so therefore they just designed to say they stay five years then they're decommissioned and burned up in the atmosphere and then they will naturally just be replaced over time that also means that this exact like, search we've seen in satellites from from starlink is not expected to continue indefinitely because at some point they're going to reach capacity of, of how many satellites they, they're going to need and they're going to begin to go into this phase where they're just maintaining the old one and replacing them as they, as they run out of, uh, of their operational life. But of course, you could have a satellite malfunction with thousands of them up there. Chances of a malfunction and losing communication with one, engine dying on one, something like that. Well, it's not a non-zero risk. But because they are in this relatively low orbit, that means that they will naturally have their orbit decay within a few months to maybe a few couple of years um, at the most. So they will disappear relatively quickly and not stay for decades in space as we saw after the uh, the Russian collision. So I think it's great that Starlink has done a lot to try and prevent this pollution because it means that should you have a collision in the low orbit where the Starlink satellites are, it's going to be so low that it's going to decay, as I said, a few months to a few years. And then they're going to be naturally decaying and, and, and be out there and we can... So it will decay rather fast should we have a collision. It can still be a problem because the satellites are so densely packed that you could have this runaway effect much, much faster. But again, they've taken their precautions. But I hope you can see what a problem this can cause because even if we should end up having a runaway effect in low Earth orbit, it could effectively mean that we can't really use low Earth orbit for a few years. And there's a lot of tech that we use today that relies on this. GPS satellites, not so much. They are a bit further out. I don't think they're going to be that much at risk for this. There might be some that are low enough that it could be affected. I think the majority of them are, are way too far out for, to be affected by this, uh, too much at least. Um, but all like high-speed satellite communication, they are all in low Earth orbit because they need shorter distances. The further they're out, the longer the communication time because speed of light, you can't change that. So that's the kind of things that's going to be uh, at risk here is, again, weather satellites, uh, so weather forecasting uh, and communication, those kind of things are at risk. Hope you found this video interesting. For more space content, click the subscribe button below there or there, depending on where YouTube are putting it these days. I don't know. Click it regardless. Thanks a lot for watching. They created I got tarp. Essentially, you have these like heat blankets. You just spread out over this, the space station where the heat shield was missing. Space shuttle, it went to space, and in many ways, this space shuttle was far superior than its American counterpart.